Ancient is obviously going to be the map, a map that NIP very much enjoys, very much likes to pick, so G2 should have seen this coming. Nico is going to back away from that smoke, sees the tracers coming through, but no real information gathered just yet. Actually, a lot of people towards the A and mid side here. It's a huge setup with only, what, Nexa holding B on his own? It's pretty rough if he was going to, if they were actually going to rush it, but it seems like they've picked the right idea, although Rez will take down Hunter Nico with a kill on device and actually forces Rez to turn around and maybe he could have got killed right then and there. Regardless, it's now four on four. The bomb is outside of the A-bomb side, but not really committed. Amanek going to wait around, to see if anyone else comes through. Always smart to wait another second there, but a uh, nice little movement there for him. Yeah, I like that as well. Reposition. There was no way Rez was going to assume someone was there. He had just killed an opposition in Donut. Amanek now backing up. They know he's here. Has the angle. Got a teammate. He's distracting and Jax pounce. That's the first kill. Linus is going to go down next and Jax is doing good work here at this bomb site, Just staying alive in the three on one. Yeah, super smart not refacing that. He, he clearly wanted to for a second because he got some cr really clean headshots in that round. So I, ca I can't blame him for wanting to find a third one. But at the same time, why give him a chance? Why try and make it two versus one if you fail that shot? Hampers now just waiting and running out of time ever so slowly. 30 seconds. The bomb is right there and Jack still still trying to play a little bit of ring around the rosy. His teammate looks are quite far away. I'm not sure why they went a bit closer. I felt like they kind of left him alone for maybe a bit too long. But Hampers in trouble no matter how you twist and turn this 20 seconds he's gonna have to go for the bomb plant and this time yeah if you're gonna be uh, anchoring that a bomb site down that really long corridor the Orgus is a good weapon for it i could i can i can understand that yeah why not get frisky Orgus is what i use whenever whenever I i'm feeling out of my depth just like a nice little <laughs> nice little thing to get back into it you know you're missing all your shots you're like all right all right i'm just gonna get this gun crouched and i'll hold this ankle for exactly it works well for that Tech Knight on Plopsky, but otherwise Deagles on the NIP side. Let's see if we can get some some cool Ooh. Swedish one digs. That's a beefy nade. Not too much damage to any one player, but good damage on four. Dominic might get tested, and he's hearing footsteps running up towards mid, and he's telling Hunter he better be careful. And he's going to back into CT spawn as well. Plenty of teammates there if they do end up attacking. It's actually Amanek who's the most exposed in this position. Yeah, for the FAMAS, I mean, it's not necessarily easy to spray down that many targets. They all have head armor pretty much. He's going to get one of them and actually a decent double kill. That at least makes sure that NIP can't just flood onto the bomb site and keep going forever. Yeah. There's the power of that org in a different position. Oh, and they stop the bomb. Rez, I don't know if he can get the bomb down. Nice flashbang to set it up and they're going to... Right at the start. Yeah, this time even less on the side of NIP, of course gonna have to wait a little while before we get to see them spring into action i mean it's really early but at least they're not they're not sort of they're, they're committed to trying to, to find the advantage before they make a big Ooh. play in some of these rounds in ip oh no mutiny on the side of, <laughs> of the swedes it's a bit early for that a bit early and we'll see how they do this i'm super curious because i feel like every team on this on this t side on, on the map is is just playing very slowly it's like you almost have to do that on this particular map so I'd be so curious if anyone has ever figured out a way to stop that from happening, to, to try and hit somewhere a little bit early. It just seems like it's very, very hard to do on Ancient. Not that, not that it has to be a bad thing, I don't really mind, but I just I would still like to see someone try and buck that trend just a bit. I'm sure we'll start seeing a lot of experimentation on the map. I'm sure a lot of experimentation, most of it's happening in practice, obviously. Good opening kill from Jax. Hampus gonna swing out and he goes down as well. No trades onto Jax and finally NIP have a bit of success. There goes Nico. That opens up the B bomb site pretty much entirely. Nexus here and NIP is being cautious. They didn't realize the whole bomb site was open to them. And for that, Hunter and Nexa are now here and able to mount just at least a minimal a bit of resistance. Oh, through the smoke, taking down Rez before the bomb is even planted. Because I was going to say, this B-bomb site, people play retake on this all the time now. Because there really aren't that many positions to plant in. And you can usually do exactly what they did. Just spam through. You have a couple of nades left. You can just throw them at the pillar or behind it. And you're probably going to be in a pretty good position here. Device and Plopsky left two versus four to try and hold on to the round to get that first round on the board for NIP. Plopsky with a very good start, but that AWP at range for Amanek. And he was on fire yesterday with it. He's going to pick up the kill on Device, leaving Plopsky on his own. And he, he, it's being diffused, but he can't really do anything to stop it. Good stop right now for the uh, CT side. They even pick up a couple of AKs. 
and steal over to that side and, and try and do some damage with. But these Molotovs are part of the reason why rushing is just almost impossible, right? You, you have to respect it just a little bit. Pushed in, there is Nico. He took a peek, might have seen the leg of someone. Pretty bold peek as well through the smoke. Yeah. Backs away, though. Took a little bit of tick from the Molotov. Hampus is down to 62. And as you kind of mentioned, start to this round very slow. Nothing aggressive, nothing fast-paced. Nico is the only one who seemed interested in that. Just burning out the right-hand side, but they're all waiting for each other at the moment. Minute on the clock, and they're starting to take control of middle just a little bit here. Looks like eventually they're going to be leaning towards the B side of the map. And they haven't really put a whole lot of pressure on anything. They haven't really shown a whole lot of presence. It's been quiet. There's vision obscured in middle. They're trying to hope and pray that G2 is going to keep eyes on these smokes in the various choke points on the mid stairs on the entrance to Donut. And meanwhile, NIP has relocated towards the B bomb site. It's all on Nexa and Nico to defend. And this hit is going to have a lot of utility behind it. Yeah, so the question is, are they going to stay on the bomb site or fall back and play like a retake? So far, they're going to try and see if they can defend it with the smoke and the HE. Great kill coming through. Nico's right behind him to take down Hampers. That's a strong way to shut down the main thrust of that push. In fact, they have to just wait behind. 20 seconds, and they probably should just fall back and save. Yeah, that's great from G2. That is really, really good holding on to your nerves. That, that smoke deployed at the top of the B ramp is just brutal right when the execute begins. NIP felt they slow played the round enough. Yeah to where G2 wouldn't have the utility that late. And uh, again, it goes back to just the fact that NIP didn't really apply any pressure, didn't make... Wow, I really went backwards on that one. <laughs> you George Bush that one. Half glass full. <laughs> Half glass full. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> sayings, really. Here we go, five to nothing. Four players for NIP in this position. Bopsy's going to lead the way. They're holding that same incredibly passive, really far back setup. And I guess they don't have a reason not to do that because it's been working. But it's this is a map where you could do a lot of really funky things on the CT side if you, if you wanted to, if you were feeling pressured, maybe. It, I kind of wish that that happens because I want to see if G2 are ever going to go you know, aggressive middle, like try and put a couple of people in there to fight or maybe push out of the A-bomb side. People have done a lot of crazy things on this map. I wonder if they think this is going to be a bit more of like a save playing very far back. Oh, that is a misplay from Amanek overexposed after the first shot. Now it's all on Jax. He's got his teammate here. Actually, Hunter does arrive in those long, deep angles at this bomb site are so difficult to deal with. And again, a 1v3 here, just like the Pisteron. And if you're Rez, you've got no smoke. Even if you get the like a kill, what are you going to do to plant this bomb? Yeah, the, the plant zone is incredibly exposed on this bomb site, so very hard. Not a lot of time left either. I was going to say he had 50 seconds, but not anymore. They line up for him. Cash is actually almost 13,000 on Nexa. That's incredible. Yeah, he's living the dream. He's having a real good time. Good kill, good opening kill from Amanek with that ADP again. Another one rings out. And he goes back. Yeah, he's able to be real aggressive using his Molotov and smoke here and going to back away to the B bomb site. So still no danger, and G2 is going to be happy to play the 5v4. Curious if Nico doesn't run into any resistance in, the, in that kind of a play, because he's tried it a couple of times. Would he be so bold as to keep going in the middle or even pushing T-spawn? If, like if he, if he doesn't feel any resistance there, that could be interesting to see. I still do like CT aggression every once in a while. Now, Hampus has made his way into the temple part of the map, the middle there. And that's always dangerous when T's get in there, even though they know it for sure. They're definitely aware that that could be happening. Plopsky's gone down in the meantime. Now it's a five on three. The bomb way outside of B. And actually, they are pushing out to just take a look outside of the B bomb side. Not all the way out, but being a little bit aggressive. Two versus four. And these deagles, even if it is rest and device, probably going to find a hard time here getting any stand-ins. That's, that's kind of a bit of a gift to get you on your feet. Yeah, let you rebound a little bit more. And that, that match probably should have, at least in the opening, should have looked way more impressive. It did end up pretty good for G2, right? They recovered yep. it and looked like the more powerful team. But yeah, maybe that's just what, what was in my mind too. I definitely, I mean, it was early days still. Don't want to throw NIP completely under the bus here, but nice aggression coming out. Nico and Nexo on the other side, double kill. And that really takes all the initiative away from NIP. That's what I was kind of 
fishing for a little bit earlier? Would they really try and go for it and, and sort of commit fully to that kind of a fight? And they did. Yeah, that's such a cool change of pace and change of aggression from G2 because both of these teams have been super content at the start of the rounds to let each other pretty much have whatever they want. Nothing crazy. NIP is able to slow play these defaults and chill for 30 seconds before making a decision. And this time, I think G2 just catches them off guard. We're not prepared. We're not focused enough to handle that aggression and really, really clean execution of it. Nico gets two kills and still has 100 HP. It's very hard to support the people that are on the wrong side of the smoke if you're coming through, because you're just going to be running into the flashbangs. Hampus trying to follow it up. Device is very low on health. From him, that gives him the confidence to be really aggressive yeah. and find that new angle. Speaking of aggression, here we go. Fast pace from NIP. Rez is shut down. Oh, that smoke. The timing was almost perfect, but Hunter with low HP. Still, again, Jax. He's got a teammate here with him. It's Amanek with the AWP, and he's caught the arm of Plopsky. This time, the smoke is deployed with a bit more safety. That really looked like he shouldn't have hit that shot. I can't believe it. It was, it really did look like it was just a hand that he shot, but it worked out anyway. Device going to be going down, trying to get through the smoke and hampers, also revealing that he is in fact on that side. One versus three in a very similar position here for Jax. He's going to go down once again. A minute left on the clock and maybe Hampus should use that time, but he's just running right at, at the moment. NIP, nothing they're doing is working. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, definitely, you know, the, the kind of, and maybe even just the, the, the confidence in, in knowing, well, we've always got something to draw on. Like, let's take that time out, get threat involved. All right. Cool boost to look over. This is actually really interesting. Don't think I've seen this too often before. Maybe once, but um, they're not finding anyone. Clearing out the early part of that whole cave. Tenth round here. And again, we're back to that slow sort of hoping for a fight here in IP. They would love to have just a round that at least starts four on five, right? If they can get that before there's 20 seconds left, that'd be really cool. I haven't really been able to. I'd get anything going, that'd be really cool. <laughs> it's been so <laughs> rough. I almost feel bad. There it is. Call on device's number. He's got you the opening kill. That's Nico down. AWP picks into the B bomb site, but you still got Nexa here. And now you have uh, Jax on the rotation over to the B bomb site to help him out. All five players from NIP are here, but they're still not pulling the trigger. Just under 40 seconds left in the round. I'm just going to be remarking on the fact that Jax does have a Molotov. He's walking right into that shot, so he's going to go down. The Molotov is on the ground for the minute. But yeah, with a little ooh, nice entry, Hampers just rolling into the bomb site. That's impressive. Yeah, there's a late Molotov. That's what I was worried about because they do need to plant the bomb, but they've got more, ma more bomb site. They're going to be able to do it, no problem. But yeah, I was just keeping my eye on that. I wonder if NIP is going to try and hunt this down. That might be one way they think it, to get back into this game is to make sure they take all the economy away. And yeah, they are pushing forward even without a round on the board, without a whole lot of money built up. They want this off. And I think it's a good call. They're going to kills even onto uh, oh, the dear. G2 side. Why is he standing in the model? Oh, that one hurts. And Nico's going to run through it. Oh, the spray. They've done so much damage. Oh, Nexa can have a nice cleanup of he just, he's got to be careful. The Vice has the angle that smoke plumes and gives them some safety, but there's someone is going to get some easy cleanup kills on the G2 side of things. Well, Hunter's coming in with an HE grenade, and you can throw that right over. That would be fun if he could just land it deep on them. Saving it for now, he is... And Amanek is alone, playing Donut. So basically covering middle and A at the same time. And then IP are using the time that's available to them to try and just reposition and catch someone off guard. Well, they've also flashed and put and allowed Nexa to push the B ramp, so he's kind of cleared down at least towards double doors. He hasn't cleared all the way up in that alley towards middle, but he knows there's not a whole lot of pressure coming towards the ramp, and that's why you see the G2 defense relocate, allows Amanek just to pay attention here. Oh no, that's awkward, and that is the signal that they're coming for him, and Amanek cannot manage that as well. Yeah, missing that shot definitely should have happened. Hampers getting the return frag there. Hunter, M4A1, and he's not able to transfer that spray, leaving Nexa on his own. 30 seconds, and they're going to get the bomb plant down. NIP, not just rushing onto the site, even after getting the kill on Nico, but actually slowing it down, relocating to the A bomb site. Even with the little bit of a mess up there for Amanek, I still think that's it's nice to see NIP starting to get back in control of this game just a little bit and find some footing. 
Next, uh, he has a kid, but no smoke to try and buy the time. If he had that, it could be fun. Maybe you could put it down and try and force them into a battle, but it's way, way, way too exposed. Listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you're you're getting rounds and points on the board, but I have to feel like these pre these last two rounds from NIP don't feel like they've won it. It feels like they've kind of gotten him off the back of some mistakes, some misplays. How often are you going to see Nico with those kinds of fights not able to get one of those three kills? How often are you going to see Amanek? Well, then, fine. A lot of candles. That's the trick. Nine to two. Let's see if they can continue. NIP, they actually are quick in the middle. This is what I was talking about earlier. You almost never see this. Flashes go everywhere in its rest to pick up the kill on Hunter. I don't know if any of them could actually see what was going on. Nico, he's going to flash his way and actually go into the middle to take the fight. Nearly a double kill for him as well. But Device is quick on the trigger with the AWP to take him down. Amenek, I don't know if he saw that. I don't know if he could see it. But either way, he's going to bring down Plopsky. Aggression is everywhere right now. Yeah, but this is going to be the signal for Rez to pounce and try and go quick as well. They they just saw two people at the B bomb site, so NIP's got to relocate and got to be very decisive on this. Rez is cutting off rotations with utility playing behind this smoke. Nex is going to try and make it happen, and there's the kill. Huge. Rez not expecting it. And Jax has gotten here in time. It's still going to be such a tough plant for NIP. I don't think they were quick enough. No, that's really the issue, isn't it? At least they have a little bit of time, but they've lost the vice in the meantime. And that means hampers. 50 seconds for a one versus three. It's set up so hard to bomb yeah. planted. It means the CTs have to come to him. This bomb site at A, you can't plant that bomb in a 1v3, no. especially if you have you no know, utility. There, there's no safety whatsoever, so you never have any tool to put that pressure on, on your opposition. Couple of rounds for NIP. Be great if they could get up to five. It wouldn't be, be fantastic, but it would at least allow for some sort of recovery. Answering back with a pretty decent HE there. Does sort of bring the gap back for those M4s to get one-shot headshots when you do even even that amount of damage, which is fine. All counts in the end, you know. It all counts. All right, slow progression for NIP. I don't think Nico expected that big of a gap to be there. Obviously, the Molotov didn't help anything at all. Nexa now. Oh, he's going to step in, pre-firing around the corner, but can't transfer over. Again, that gap in the smoke. LNZ is able to take care of him quickly. Hunter's coming and able to get the first. Three on three as the bomb goes down. Pops not able to actually pick up that spray at the right idea at any rate. But the bomb down, and yeah, Jax is the one that's lurking in behind them. They can't really wait for him forever either because then they're going to start looking. So they try to just... Draw a bit of attention away. Jax is now a little bit late to the party in a one versus two, and he's going to be crouching a run. Took, took quite a bit, though. Yeah, it was like 14,000 on Nexo at one point. Yeah, he was rich. Rich. Exactly. Nico with a deagle. Had to buy that. Can't really blame him. <laughs> Nico should always have a deagle. I know. Someone else should sack. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even Rez has got to be laughing at that. Yeah. There is that tiny weird little pixel that you can sort of look through. The sweaty rain angle. Yeah. And Nico's like, I know exactly where that is. Oh, don't peek again. Don't find a perfect timing. That would be ridiculous. Plopsky had his back turned for just a couple seconds. Yeah, Nico's thinking about it, but he's got he's got a teammate he's, there to He's distract. waiting for Nexus contact. Oh, surely, yes. There it is. Almost could have had that one on device. That was like a... That res wall bang. It's like if you have a really noisy neighbor, Jason. It didn't even come up as a, as a wall bang. No, it didn't. He actually he hit him, him, like, in the tiny pixel. It's perfect. I actually didn't even think about that. That's actually true. This could... I don't know. I, I, there's, a, there's a chance this gets a little spicy. I don't think. I think they're going to be just fine handling Hunter with his USB if he tries to come through the smoke, and indeed he won't even go for it. So there was, there was a small opportunity, uh, but NIP has stabilized pretty well. Bomb planted, three on two, all the weapons, and, and yeah, this will be a fourth round for the ninjas now. As Hunter and Jax just back away. They'll buy for the last round looking for an 11-4 lead going into halftime. Really good, really impressive stuff. Fifth, uh, fifth round is in play for NIP. They could pick it up, but they're going to have to fight for it. You're right, real hard. And, um, I mean, it's, what do you think? If it ends 10 to, 10 to 5? I think at this point, 
considering how it was, you know. An MP9, a FAMAS, a couple of M4s, and an AWP on Amanek. Some limited grenades could definitely be a problem in a retake scenario if they get there. Heavy lean early on for NIP towards the B-bomb site. Okay, putting down the smoke and just challenging. Hoping to catch someone at the edge. Rez is definitely aware. Four damage, that's not going to really trigger I, anything. I wonder if this is like a signal to NIP that, that mid is occupied by G2, that Nico's just kind of sitting there behind the smoke spamming a little bit. They've got to be like, well, he's not worried about middle whatsoever. And there's got to be a reason for that. Hunter's pushed up. Amanek with an AWP baiting for him at a deep corner. Yeah, incredibly aggressive in the middle. You jump here, maybe you avoid the AWP, but you run right into the MP9. And if you walk out, well then... Might not be much better. Surprise there. Device up close against the MP9. And he's going to go down. Amanek will take down Linus. Now, Jack sister falls. So they just keep trading left and right. Rez is up next for the lottery. They've got the bomb as well. And Amanek surely should have spotted that. Plopsky's fighting, and Nico's going to take him down completely blind. They've got to know Amanek is still here. It's Hampus with the kill, left in a one versus two, and Nexa is nowhere nearby. And there goes Amanek again, missing a shot. The nade, perhaps a distraction, but 30 seconds for Hampus in this 1v1. Yeah, he can make it to the B-bomb side, so he's just trying to offset that position a bit, hoping that Nexa will assume it's A. And that's that's a good call right now for Hampus. Yeah, the coin flip comes up heads. I'm not even sure it was the nade. I feel like I feel like Amanek has, hit, has missed a Do couple of shots. I, I honestly, got, when I saw it initially, I thought it was just a straight-up miss, but I wanted to give the homeboy the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but... Help a brother out. But listen, I love Amanek. I think he plays amazingly, but... I think he's missed a couple of shots this half that he maybe shouldn't have. Yeah, those sitters in Donut earlier were a bit brutal. Yeah, could be uh, just uh, sort of a getting into the feel of things early on. Who knows? But it's worth pointing out at any rate because I think actually a lot of the times he'll hit that shot, basically. What a I'm tough, calling him out because I think he's great. What a tough clutch for Nexo as well. No utility. <laughs> you have no knowledge of where he could possibly be. All you've got is this kit. Oh, oh. They won five of the last six rounds of the half. So finally got into it. Finally found some uh, some some winning recipes. Able to put some points on the board. And I mean, that's going to help him obviously a lot in the second half. That would be a huge buffer. Nico's going to lead the way very quickly. It's just a rush. And quickly two players, Nico and Amanek, are down. But now the trades start coming in the other direction. Yeah, two players, three guns though. The Dooley's picked up a kill in the middle of that fight. And now it's a four on three. The bomb has been planted. They do have maybe a chance of doing this. There's pistol rounds, you never really know. There's a kit as well on the side of Linus, so maybe he could do some work with that. Hunter's gone down already. Nexa trying to hold it. Jax with a headshot. And now it turns around. He gets one more hit. His butt in the other direction. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> that would have forced G2 to actually have to get out of the room. And then maybe, maybe the superior numbers can work its, uh, work its magic. That's really tough, because if they would have won that, like you said, the recovery was good at the end of the first half. You go into the second half, you win that, and you just feel pretty good about it. Linus goes down to Nico. And now it's a four on five with... Hmm, bomb part about to happen. Over on the other side, Hunter is out looking with the UMP for anyone that he could find. Why not pick up some extra cash while you can? Yeah, shout out to the bonus money. I think NIP surely just gonna chill. Try and keep these three weapons alive, the Scout and the two Deagles. Try again in the next round. Either way, back-to-back -back, uh, B rushes. Still works, like Novocaine. It, it does. Um, also, good, uh, good track from Green Day. I've, in case anyone's interested. What? Keep me over Kane. Okay. Or American Idiot album. Green Day fan? Yeah, one of the best albums for in a long time, I think, even still. Um, okay, that's a very random statement to, uh, to make. Sep September is ending, Jason, as well, is on there. Yeah, September um, is coming to a close. I don't know what. <laughs> Wake me up. Now, I think they're on, what, like a five-map winning streak on this? A four-map winning streak coming into this series, and it looks like G2 is going to put a quick end to that one. At least for the moment. We'll see if NIP can recover... In this round, with the three weapons they saved, or when the guns come out in the next? The powerhouse duo yesterday for G2 was Amanek and, and Nico. And Amanek's pulled off just a little bit. Nico is going at the same speed. He's just not slowing down. Which, I love it. Yeah, it's super impressive, isn't it? Just imagine every day, so you'd never have like a day where it's like, ah, it's like, he is really something else. I, I, I just, I've said this a number of times. I just really want Nico to re enter the conversation for the best player in the world. Hell yes. I don't think anyone's going to get close to simple anytime soon, but I'd like him to be in the conversation. Yeah, that was, I mean, for, for a while, definitely people were making the, the Nico simple Device you know, comparison. Yeah. Before Zaiwu popped off. 
And Cold Zero out there somewhere. Cold Zero is in there as well. Not to forget. Hunter will get a kill with the UMP before he does go down. Scout is uh, getting a little bit off close to the, the rifles there. Got to be careful. Hampers on his own. One versus three. Maybe could do some economic damage, but real quickly in these gun rounds. All right, setting up maybe for something here. Or is it just a smoke? Wondered if he wanted to flash his way into... It's just, he's holding a flashbang in case there's any aggression from the CT side. He can pop a flashbang for Nico and Nexa to be able to take those fights or to be able to force back that aggression from NIP if it were there. We saw that uh, G2 themselves did that, right? So maybe, you know, they, they don't want to taste that either. I feel like you you have to expect it's going to happen at some point during a half. Surely, obviously, more teams are or different teams are going to be more willing to be that aggressive. But I feel like no matter no matter what, you got to expect it once or twice in a half. Middle is being watched by Hampers, quite far back. Device with the AW. They got a huge lean again towards the B bomb site. Maybe not that uncommon. It feels like. B is going to be the end game for G2. The bomb is on Almanac, very, very far back of the B ramp, but it hasn't budged since it got here at the start of the round. So even if G2 was to put some kind of a pressure, maybe try and feign some sort of split through mid towards the A bomb site, it, it always feels like this was going to end up here. This has been the plan since Freeze time. And they haven't really done anything to try and sell NIP on the fact that it, it was going to be anything else either. So they're just kind of waiting here with three people on the site. Plopsky goes down. But then again, so did Jax. Pretty good little flick coming out there. Lena's playing it close with the Orc, and they're going to run right past him. And this is looking pretty good for the defense. 15 seconds on the clock, and I don't know if G2 can make it through here. Two on three. Any mistake right now, and the bomb is going to be on the ground. They're also getting flanked. The more they wait, the worse it's going to get, and Hampus will get the luck. Pace, they're giving up the game. They're showing a lot of footsteps. Hampus in front of the smoke is going to go down. No teammate out to trade it. The off on devices rotating over through Temple, and Rez has got an off angle around the edge of the smoke, but he's getting way too spammed to stick around. He's got to back away as well. So even though damage has been done, NIP's not able to have too much success, and Nico is ready to deploy a real late flank and lurk through mid. Possibly be lucky to be alive there, Rest, isn't he? That could have gone awfully wrong. There's no more smokes on G2. Oh, that's awkward, they it? need to use the ones that are up right now, and Nexa is still far away from the bomb site. Yeah, it feels like running out of smokes and waiting for the other ones to evaporate means you're kind of committed to actually taking a bunch of fights before you can even get the bomb down. I, yeah. I don't know if I like this slowdown. I think this, it's actually betrayed G2. Maybe they were expecting for more of a flank to come in, and maybe they could have done something there. Device getting jacks, it was real close. But again, yeah, you see the wide open space here to put the bomb down. Amanek might even be lucky to be alive at that moment there. Two on three, he's low on health. Nexa has the bomb, but it's everywhere it's a crossfire. There's nowhere to stand. That's exactly why you needed the smokes. Yeah, I, this, I, this, this round, and I think they gave the space to NIP to get back in the round. Well, but now it's uh, kind of exciting because now we got 13 to seven. It's a six round gap that can definitely be closed if they can, if they can start to build their own economy up NIP, which they haven't really done yet. But now is a good chance to do it. Hampus, aware that someone could be boosting over, still taking a. A little bit of freedom here to turn his back. Linus goes down and yeah, just a four on four, but at least they know it's Deagles. You know, this map reminds me of a movie called, uh, I think it's called Ruins or The Ruins. You ever seen that? No, I have not. Tourists go to some South American country to visit a ruin. As you do, yeah. And bad things happen. Okay. Is I won't like spoil it, but... I'm not going to watch it. You should. <laughs> I think you would enjoy it. just trying it. to tell you now. Uh, maybe off camera, you can spoil it. Feel free. No, it's fine. Anything like Tomb Raider? I'll... No, no. I'll bring it... I was going to say, I'll bring it on a DVD, but no one uses that anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> probably doesn't exist anymore. It's probably been lost. Hampus... Oh, no. Goes down, Amanek with a little bit of a kill. This is really awkward. They've picked up the org as well. This should be the chance for NIP to build money, not lose the round. They've got it all backwards. Plopsky 
Ready and waiting in case Nico comes through. The bomb, though, is being planted behind him in the bomb side, and Nico inside of the smoke, still able to pick it up. What went wrong here, Jason? What was the matter with NIP in this round? I mean, just how it always goes wrong in these rounds. You get a couple picks, the defense gets thinned out, and G2 made the right selection of where to just walk and creep right up middle and had their choice of either bomb site they wanted to go to. They would have had a three on one with Nico somewhere to be a flank, to be a lurk on the other side. That's brutal. Even finds res. Win from here on out. No more mistakes. AWP on device. Deagles on the rest. And kind of no one, no one towards the A bomb side at least early on. Or the NIP side. Nico just getting really close, and he's running straight for it. Checking that corner, following up a big double kill. And yeah, this already looks like this bomb site is gonna fall. Nico must really, really love entering on this on this bomb site specifically, because I've seen him, you know, normally he's slow playing and he's lurking and he kind of gets to make his own decisions. And the three times they've gone to the B bomb site very, very fast, including the pistol round, he's the one leading the way. So something about the angles much make him feel uh, must make him feel real comfortable taking fights. And they even find the AWP just to make everything much worse. I mean, what I really like is that he actually goes He's, he's just aiming straight for that corner because in the beginning when this map came out, so many teams when they came in on the T side just forgot about it, ignored that corner for way too long, and they didn't Molotov it either, which I found to be very annoying. But uh, it's good to, good to see them actually go for it now. Pay attention and all that. I think now that we're starting to see teams like uh, really show some success with different executes and protocols in this bomb site, it's kind of like... Yeah, that's even better, isn't it? All right, he's aware. Hampus is gonna have to do a real fine job to get out of this one alive. Almost baited into a shot potentially there. That could have been a little bit scary. Did he see the gun barrel? Hard to say. Walking back now to look for Jackson. I don't know, it looked like he had the right, uh, the right idea and maybe even a second there where he could have landed the kill. Oh my Lord, this timing. Yeah, it's almost unbelievable. Jax though. Doesn't look like he's aware of it. Amanek certainly isn't, and Jax is going to be going down. Device, he knew that Jax was going to be there, so he gets the kill on Device, but that's kind of the wrong target, so he still kept looking for the follow-up fight there. That's got to be frustrating to Amanek, but the timing on that is just so unfortunate and brutal for Jax yeah. to be able to cover that position. So Nexa with the bomb. It's paired up with Hunter, Nico doing his lurk thing over in mid. He's going to find Rez, as Rez just wants intel, but Nico's able to put him down. Device is in uh, way, way back at the CT side stairs. Uh, LNZ over towards the B bomb site, so this movement in towards A is going to be just fine. No smokes needed for this plant. Nico's still lurking, might be able to catch Device, who's getting aggressive. That's a big win for Deva, and here goes the bomb. Two on two for the map. He's really trying to bring them back and try to see if they can get another couple of rounds here, but he's eventually going to get caught by Hunter. Bomb is down in the bomb site, and Delinus, what could he do here? He doesn't have a kit. Picked up an AK. I guess that is something, but ultimately the clock is going to be running against him in such a big way that he kind of has to find the first kill pretty quickly. Molotov? I don't know if he can stop them. I'm sure they're going to just burst through if it ever comes down to it. And it's a 10-second defuse yeah. on top of everything else. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way that this could work out, but I don't think there is they one. They could wait out the Molotov and still win. Yeah.